Good day everyone. I'm going to introduce a new topic. We previously finished with the first three lessons for your midterm and we've talked about philosophers in uh, from western and eastern perspectives and uh, we've talked about the sociologists as well about their uh, philosophy of self and uh, We've already finished our midterm, and so uh, starting from today, all our lessons will cover for the final exam uh, for the nine, next nine weeks. And uh, we'll be starting our, off or kicking off with this most interesting topic, the physical and sexual self. So what would we learn today? So we will be exploring the aspects of self and sexuality. You will also be able to share a definition of what human sexuality will be and distinguish between sex, gender, and sexual orientation. We will also review common and alternative sexual behaviors and appraise how pleasure, sexual behaviors, and, and concern, consent are intertwined. So we'll be starting off first with the philosophy of sex. So we're, we're going to talk about philosophers again here. And they are, there are like two kinds. Uh, when it comes to sex, uh, philosophers are divided into two. So we have the metaphysical sexual pessimists who believe that sexual desire is morally wrong and should only be done in the bounds of marriage for procreation and not for mere pleasure. One example of those uh, sexual pessimists would be Immanuel Kant. And there are still others, but the only one given in our module is Immanuel Kant. Now, we have uh, several sexual optimists, and uh, sexual optimist uh, believes that sex is a natural bonding mechanism that joins people together, both sexually and non-sexually. So when we say it's, um, they are more uh, on the bonding bonding side, uh, it could involve sex or the act of sex, and sometimes even uh, even when sex is not uh, happening or physical sex is not happening, they are still together. Okay, so one example of a sexual optimist would be Plato. So for Plato, sexual activity is not good or bad. It depends on how a person does it or paano ito gamitin or gawin ng isang tao. So there are two types of uh, sexual activity for him. He calls the first one vulgar eros and the other one is heavenly eros. So eros means passionate love. So vulgar eros happens... Well, when bad sexual activity satisfies only the desire of uh, a person only or or the sole concern of the person is for his or her own benefit or satisfaction and he will do or gratify or satisfy the sexual desire by any means na gusto niya now uh, we have the other counterpart however is heavenly eros where sex partners are concerned more about the well-being of the other person having a single partner to do it with usually so ay, may isa pong ditong example niyan uh, the story of the 50 shades of grey now in the story of the 50 shades of grey um, Christian grey started um, with a contract of fulfilling his sexual activity or sexual desire through Anna or Anastasia, the female character in the story. Now, they signed a contract wherein uh, Anna was actually attracted to Christian already. That's why she, uh, she uh, allowed or she signed the contract of having sexual activity with Christian Grey although she noticed in the contract that uh, Christian only merely wants to use her as a sexual object and do many things or many and any means that would satisfy his sexual desire so even uh, by means of torture by means of uh, other means of like uh, making it uh, a painful sex or having submission, submissive sex for Anna and and uh, and uh, Christian Grey would be the dom dominating part. So it's like, and then later on when 
when uh, Christian realized that Anna could not stand it anymore, being treated like a sex object, and uh, she was crying, they were developing a sexual relation wherein uh, even Christian, uh, the hard-hearted Christian Gray, has developed concern about Anna's well-being. So from there on, dun po nag-uumpisa, naging heavenly eros na, wherein uh, they continued to have sexual activity, but it's now out of love, not out of lust. Now, we have another metaphysical sexual optimist, and it comes with the Catholic priest Thomas Aquinas. So, for him, he agrees with a pessimist, actually, that sex is for procreation, but he does not limit sex just for procreation. So, he said... Uh, the sperm should only be deposited in a female vagina and uh, this means that the sexual act should be done in order to procreate now um, I am not aware if uh, if he meant that this one is somehow connected to masturbation so masturbation it, the sperm is alam natin kung saan po yan napupunta but it's not deposited in a female vagina. So for him, masturbation could be a sin. Uh, dito naman po tayo kay uh, nag-iisang babaeng philosopher that we have, uh, we have uh, mentioned, ever mentioned here. And the first one, and uh, currently po, buhay pa po to. Si Christine Godorf, she's an American psychologist and also teaching about... Uh, body and and uh, about sex but she was like introducing it in the christian perspective now she believes that sexual activity can be enjoyed and be done with to pleasure couples who are bound in marriage so he, she requires marriage as well like the pessimist but she uh, has this intriguing concept that a woman's clitoris is, is not needed for reproduction but for pleasure during sexual activity. Therefore, she believes God intends sexual activities to be pleasurable too. So, she's an author of and a lecturer actually of Body, Sex, and Pleasure reconstructi uh, Reconstructing Christian Sexual Ethics. So... Uh, she, uh, she has been, she's also part of those who believe that sex is for procreation and should be pleasurable. Okay, the next part or the second part of our uh, topic about the sexual self is the physiology of sex or the physical aspect of sex. Now, we are aware that the uh, the symbol of uh, female chromosome is XX and male is XY. Now, uh, this distinguishes the, the characteristics or the differences of the characteristics physically of both, both uh, male and female. Now, human beings are all sexual beings. Ibig sabihin, lahat po tayo may sariling sex and meron tayong sexuality. But here, we're going to talk about sexual development first, which takes place when humans are still inside the womb of their mothers. So, sex is a biological component determined on the basis of primary sex characteristics. And primary sex characteristics are the anatomical traits essential for reproduction, or we call them the gonads. The secondary sex characteristics are primary traits not essential to reproduction that results from the actions of the so-called male and female hormones. Now, what are the examples of uh, primary sex characteristics? These are the, the, the organs or the tissues that are involved in reproductive or reproduction or procreation or pag-create po ng bagong buhay like a baby, like the babies na, uh, or offsprings, or mga magiging anak. Now, secondary sex characteristics, ito po yung mga facial hair, yung walang mga kinalaman kumbaga sa paggagawa ng uh, pagpuproduce ng bata. So, meron uh, secondary characteristics, breast for female, facial hair for lalaki, voice change, underarm hair, pubic hair, yan po ang mga ano. menstruation, actually menstruation has something to do with the uh, anatomical 
traits essential for reproduction. Now, for terms to remember, we'll learn more what uh, reproductive glands are. Now, these uh, gonads, the first term is gonads. So, these are reproductive glands which are essential for the reproductive system. So, for example, the male gonad develops... Uh, develops in the testes. So, ito po example ng primary sex uh, primary sex characteristics. The male productive, reproductive or system and the female reproductive system. Now, the gonads are uh, male gonads are developed in the testes or uh, that's the presence of your sperm. And then the eggs or the, or, or, or the female or or gonads are found in the ovary which is released by the ovary through the fallopian tube to be um, implanted into the uterus so vagina ito po siya wherein the penis is inserted uh, during intercourse okay next one uh, male duct and genitalia it's the uh, it's developed in the presence of testosterone and female duct genitalia or the vagina develops in the absence of testosterone during the formation of the babies or the humans inside the womb of their mother now next one would be uh, next terminology that we need to remember is pseudo hermaphrodite or pseudo hermaphroditism so, female develops male organ and male develops female accessories. So, eto pong mga nangyayari. Ang babae, nagkakaroon po ng uh, penis or the vagina is... Uh, actually, doon muna po tayo sa number 5, which is slide 11, hermaphrodite or intersex. Eto po yung presence ng both ovarian and testicular organs in one person. So, meron po siyang ovary... Meron po siyang vagina, meron din siyang penis. So, ito po ang tinatawag natin ngayong hermaphrodite. Uh, in the modern times, it's already changed into the term intersex. Ibig sabihin, she, she or he has two sexes or sex organs within one body. Now, balik po tayo dun sa pseudo hermaphrodite. Ang pseudo hermaphrodite develops over time. For example, pinanganak siyang uh, vagina ang kanyang sex organ, then later on, the clitoris develops into a penis or lumalaki po siya at humahaba at nagiging penis ang clitorial part. Now, we have also uh, male develops female accessories. So, example dito, nakikita nyo sa picture that in slide uh, 11, that uh, the, the presence of male organ indicates na lalaki po siya. That's the primary sex characteristic. However, the secondary uh, characteristics have, uh, because of low testosterone sa katawan, tulad po ng, ng mga third sex natin na nagtitik ng female hormonal pills, nawawala po yung <clears throat> secondary uh, male characteristics nila. They develop breast, okay, or nakakadede sila. And then, we, they have wider hips kasi lalaki po, mas uh, pavi po ang katawan ng lalaki wherein ang babae pabilog po sa pagdating sa hips. Why? It's because the pelvic bone is being developed for the implantation of the baby or mag, yun ang magdadala sa baby habang nasa sinapupunan ng isang babae. <clears throat> now, uh, nawawalan po ng bigote, nawawalan ng underarm hair, nawawalan ng chest hair, uh, nagkakaroon po ng breast development. Kapag lower na ang level ng tao, sometimes it's natural. <clears throat> it comes naturally. Hindi po nila sinasadya. Unlike po sa pagtitik po ng female hormonal pills na mga third sex na gustong magkaroon ng katawan na babae, they, and still they have not transplanted uh, uh, the primary sex organ. They have not replaced it yet. Ganito po magiging itsura nila. Now, third topic that we're going to discuss is about the psychology of tests. So, we're done with uh, the philosophy of sex. Then, we, the next topic was the physiology or the physical aspect of sex. Uh, now, we're going to talk about the psychology of sex. We will talk about how sex and the brain are connected. So, roles of the brain in sexual activity. 
So the brain is responsible for translating the nerve impulses sensed by the skin into pleasurable sensations. So the brain also controls the nerves and muscles used in sexual activities. Sexual thoughts and fantasies are theorized to lie in the cerebral cortex, the same area used for thinking and reasoning. So when you think about the other person, when you have sexual thoughts and you have sexual fantasies, you are using the same part of the brain, which is the cerebral cortex, uh, used for thinking and reasoning. So pwede mo po marireason dyan. Ay, hindi po siya... Uh, hindi, siya, hindi siya maganda or hindi siya bagay sa akin, hindi siya gwapo. So, do, doon po nagre-reason ang brain ninyo. If that person is, uy, bagay sa akin to. Uy, magkasing height kami. Or we like the same things. So, emotions and feelings which are important for sexual behavior are believed to originate in the limbic system. So, the limbic system is the part of the brain involved in our behavioral and emotional responses. So, Especially when it comes to behaviors we need for survival, like uh, kakailangan na natin kumain, when we need sex, so we, we, we long for reproduction and caring for our young, or our fight and flight responses. So dito po nang gagaling yung ating sensations and responses in the limbic system. Once our limbic system receives uh, emotions and feelings, then... Uh, the brain releases hormones considered as the physiological origin of sexual desire. So, these hormones is somehow connected also uh, with your physical aspect of sex. Now, what are these hormones? So, the roles of these hormones in sexual activity are the following. So, we have the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland. The hypothalamus is the most important part of the brain for sexual functioning. This small area of the base at the base of the brain has several groups of nerve cell bodies that receive input from the limbic system. So once may go signal na po ng hypothalamus that the pituitary gland secretes the hormones produced in the hypothalamus. And what are these hormones? So these hormones are used uh, Kumbaga, helps us in every stage of the uh, sexual relationship. So, anthropologist Helen Fisher proposed three stages of falling in love and for each stage, a different set of chemicals or hormones run the show. So, we have the following. So, first of all, is the first stage is lust or nakita mo na physically the person is, uh, you have are having sexual desire for the person. And uh, sa lalaki po, uh, ang hypothalamus will di dictate the pituitary gland to release testosterone, which yun nga, na, nagdi-dictate po ng male uh, male characteristics or secondary male characteristics like for example um, feeling macho na siya because uh, nakita niya yung bae and then the estrogen level of the woman will also uh, become higher kasi isip na nakita niya yung lalaki na oh macho yung lalaki yun and the female counterpart hormone of the body is being released and yun nagpapakikay nagpapakute so uh, that's the part wherein they get to be sexually aware of each other. Now, next uh, phase of uh, falling in love, or I mean of a relationship or sexual relationship is attraction. Wherein, pagkalingon niya, nakita niyang the other person is uh, attractive for him. Para siyang pinupul na magnet dun sa isang tao na yon. And uh, the hormones responsible for that is dopamine and norepinephrine. Norepinephrine and serotonin. So, what do these hormones do? So, uh, norepinephrine is responsible for the extra surge of energy and triggers increased heart rate, loss of appetite as well as the loss of the desire to sleep. The body is more alert and is ready for action. So, once you, you face the attraction uh, phase or the attraction na, na part, na stage ng, ng relationship, um, Norepinephrine is responsible for making your heart beat faster. Kapag nakikita mo si crush mo, lumalakas yung kabog ng dibdib mo. Kapag nag-aaway kayo or hindi ka pinansin, nawawala ka ng gana kumain, nawawala ka ng gana matulog or hindi ka makatulog. So, the body is alert for 
is more alert and is ready for the next action. Kung lalaki naman ay uh, attracted din sa babae, nag alert na siya na to make the first move. Now, what about dopamine? Dopamine is responsible for the motivation and goal are directed behavior. So, it makes you pursue your object of affection. So, si babae magpapakita kay lalaki, magdi-display, the boy is like making the first steps of uh, of uh, introducing themselves to each other, magpakilala. So, it creates the sense of novelty or bago, bago lahat, nandun na excitement where the person seems exciting, special and unique that you want that to tell the whole world about his or her admirable traits. Now, serotonin, serotonin is actually your um, mood stabilizer. So, kapag ikaw ay in love, nagiging uh, stable yung iyong pag-iisip. So, serotonin, but usually po, those who are in love, uh, they have uh, lower levels of serotonin. Bakit po lower ang levels ng serotonin? Kasi ito po ay mood stabilizer and usually when you're in love, your feelings are in roller coaster. Right? Now, next one on the attachment part. So, meron na pong halimbawa sexual attraction. Now, pagdating po na ano, no, mag-boyfriend-girlfriend mag, uh, and then might have uh, sexual relationship or may not have, but you might skip the sexual part, but you might go continue with the attachment phase. Ano po yung attachment phase? Uh, hormones of oxytocin and vasopressin are being released here. So, ano po yung oxytocin? It's the love hormone. So, the love hormone makes you feel attached to the person that you are uh, that you are with now oxytocin is also known as the binding hormones so these hormones help to lay down the long term memories for the cell it also makes the person feel bonded to the object that gave him or her sexual pleasure so hindi lang sexual pleasure if if you are doing something uh, <clears throat> for your girlfriend or boyfriend sa inyong stage ngayon in your years in, in your age pala ngayon as college students when you give flowers to the girl the, the girl f or, or says I love you to the person the person feels bonded to you <clears throat> and uh, attached to you because of the pleasurable things that you are making him feel or her feel now we have also your vasopressin your vasopressin, um, that's for the male, and oxytocin for the female. Now, dopamine, going back to dopamine, dopamine is also known as your happy hormone. It induces a sense of craving and supplies a great sense of pleasure. When dopamine is released, it tells the brain, I have got to have this thing. This is what I need right now. So, parang... Uh, nandun yung ano, kailangan ko siya, kailangan ko siya. Diba? Now, norepinephrine, the brain's version of adrenaline. So, it makes you focus and sometimes, sa pinapaprepare niya yung katawan mo, something is about to happen and we need to get ready for it. So, once, uh, wa, bagang iba niyan, ready to pursue the girl or ready na um, babae, ready to meet up with the boy, okay, or later on, they have sex, and so this one is like, the attraction phase is like very strong for them. The pull to be together is very strong for them. Now, next slide would be, yeah, the explanation for uh, norepinephrine, dopamine, serotonin, and oxytocin and vasopressin. Now, since kayo po ay nasa college pa lang, I am not promoting premarital sex here. So, I'm going to give you advices on how to produce those happiness chemicals or those, uh, those hormones which are involved to give you happiness. Now, it's not only found in sex. So, those, those chemi happy chemicals or happiness chemicals can also be hacked through the following uh, activities like for example dopamine the reward chemical also known as the reward chemical dopamine can be secreted by the hypothalamus or pituitary gland when you complete a certain task you do some self-care activities like going to the salon 
and have a beauty treatment and have a massage or eating the food that you love like ice cream like after a long exam you want to reward yourself with an ice cream because you're so tired and celebrating little wins so oxytocin which is the love hormone the binding hormone can also be achieved not just by sex but by playing with a dog playing with a baby holding hands hugging your family and giving and receiving compliments serotonin the mood stabilizer could also be uh, attained through meditating running sun exposure or magpaaraw po kayo walk in nature swimming and cycling so endorphin the male the painkiller so endorphin is um dito po ay na kukuha rin po siya sa laughter exercise when you watch a move a comedy essential oils dark chocolate and exercising so the last part of our lesson is slide number 20 and uh, we're uh, we're showing here erogenous zones of both male and female so these are areas of the body which induces excitement when touched sexually so meron po mga similarities uh, both male and female for the erogenous zones like the ears, the mouth, the neck, front and back, and the shoulders for the upper part, breast and nip nipples, uh, the genital area, the hands, the insides of the thighs. These are the examples na both are sensation, uh, sensual for both male and female. So, uh, may females have extra erogenous zones on the cheeks, the waist, uh, the buttocks and the back of the knee. Sa mga lalaki naman, ang ganilang extra erogenous zones uh, would be the navel or the yung puso, base of the spine uh, and the soles of their feet. Slide number 21 would be the physiology of sex which uh, describes the human sexual response cycle on, uh, consist, uh, on sex as consisting of four stages so we have your first is your excite the excitement phase uh, the physical or ph physiological response would be genitals become engorged with blood vagina expands and secretes uh, lubricants and the penis enlarges in the plateau stage or phase excitement peaks breathing uh, pulse and blood pressure and they all continue to increase in the orgasm stage or phase, contractions all over the body and there is an increase in breathing, pulse and blood pressure and sexual release is being is happening. In the last part, yung resolution naman po, engorged genitals release blood sa malalaki and the male goes through refractory phase. Ano po yung refractory phase? Babalik po sa dating uh, size yung penis and women resolves lower kasi yung babae. Uh, it's not visible po ang kanilang pag-cool down, unlike po sa lalaki. Now, for those who, uh, this is the chart for the phases of sex. So, the time for excitement is bigger, orgasm is smaller, and resolution as well. So, uh, excitement and plateau, medyo matagal. Orgasm takes the shortest time, and resolution as well. Uh, mas matagal po sa babae, faster po sa lalaki. Now, for those who are not, how cannot relate with these uh, stages or phases of sexual uh, sex uh, sexual activity uh, i will be showing you that is very good example so it's like taking a swim sabi nila the four stages of sex or the four phases of sex excitement is when you are climbing up the diving board so nararamdaman mo na uy tatalo na ko excited ka as well as kabado ka and then when you go to the diving board, you step on top of the diving board waiting for the most exciting thing to happen. That is the jump. And that would be your orgasm, kumbaga sa sex, sa phases of sex. Uh, you're waiting for something to happen. Or something to, exciting to, to happen. And the plateau stage is the, is the continuation of the excitement phase. And once you do the jump, which is the shortest moment, actually, it just is just a few seconds or a few minutes. Uh, it's like uh, the org orgasm part of the phases of sex, the shortest one, but the most exciting part. And then later on, when you are floating and swimming around, that would be your resolution, or that is your refra refractory phase, wherein you are relaxing or in a relaxed mood. 
next topic would be sexual problems so we have uh, we are dealing with some sexual problems like number one sex and pornography addiction so porn viewing releases adrenaline or the physical rush gives us the phys physical rush and dopamine which is the painkiller so ito daw po ay addictive this combination of the two is like being addicted to drugs that's why kung minsan hindi daw natin hindi daw makukontrol ng taong addict sa porn and sex yung kanilang uh, ang kanilang kagustuhan to do it again like uh, yung iba pong nag uh, na magkakaroon na ng se multiple sexual partners or those who are watching pornography like also uh, pedophiles yun po mga parang nagkakaroon po sila ng abnormal na kagustuhan pagdating po sa uh, when it comes to 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 sex or pornography mas naghahanap po sila the wilder the better para sa kanila so dun po nila nare-realize kasi yung mga uh, hormones na gustong gustong that makes them feel good next one is uh, actually can you can uh, view about additional info uh, regarding sa sex and pornography addiction through this website uh, fightthenewdrug.org and how porn changes the brain Second one is rape. So we have the Anti-Rape Law of 1997, Republic Act 8353. Uh, and a rape is committed when and how. So number one daw by a man who shall have carnal knowledge of a woman under the following circumstances. Uh, carnal knowledge, ibig sabihin po ay ginalaw niya or uh, sexual uh, act. Number letter A, through force, threat, or, or intimidation. Like, uh, punersa ka. You are threatened with a gun or a knife or tinatakot ka. Uh, sige, huwag sumbong ka at uh, at gawin mo to. Pinipilit ka ng ayaw mong gawin pero tinatakot gamit yung pananakot sa iyo. So, the second part is uh, rape is committed when the offended party is deprived of reason or otherwise unconscious. For example, uh, nilagyan ng gamot yung iniinom mo or nilasing ka at hindi mo ginusto na magkaroon kayo ng pagtatalik and that happens like uh, it can be uh, can be rape uh, it, it is rape um, like for example married couples halimbawa uh, pwede rin pong maging unconscious yung isang tao like for example sinuntok or hinimatay and then you still want to have sex so pwede pa rin pong kasuhan yan kahit po marital, uh, there's the presence of marital rape in the Philippines. So, by means of fraudulent machination and or grave abuse of authority, for example, uh, plinano mo. Plinano mo na makorner siya or ikaw na boss, uh, tinakot mo siya, ginamit mo yung authority mo. Like, for, uh, meron din pong ano, yun, police. Halimbawa, uh, yung kaso ng pulis na, na nilabas niya yung inmate at nilagay niya at ginamit niya yung inmate. So, pwede din pong grave abuse of authority because nasa pangangalaga nila yung babae, eh, akala nila pwede na nilang gawin kahit ano. So, when the offended party is under 12 years of age or is demented or medyo ano, kumbaga, baliw siya or wala siya sa tampag-isip even though none of the circumstances mentioned above be present. So, kapag ginalaw mo ay under 12 years of age at uh, psychologically incapacitated, baliw, uh, kahit wala pong pananakot, wala pong threat, wala pong puwersa, uh, it's still considered rape. Next one would be by a by any person who under the circumstances mentioned in the paragraph 1 hereof shall commit an act of sexual assault by inserting his penis into another person's mouth or anal orifice or any instrument or object into the genital or anal orifice of another person. So, pag, pag, pag kahit na ano po, kahit ano po ang ginamit sa inyo, uh, basta ginalaw po ang inyong uh, genitals it, nang hindi nyo po consent or wala po kayong consent is uh, already considered great. It's uh, either your uh, penis, the penis of the, the rapist, or kahit ano pa mang instrumento. Like for example, they have sex toys or they, uh, tulad po rin ng kwento sa amin doon sa probinsya. 
yung bakla ay nilagyan po nila ng ng bote ng soft drinks yung ulo po yung neck ng 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 8 ounce na soft drinks pinasok po nila sa anal orifice ng bakla so what happened is that hinimatay at hospital po yung bakla and he he was uh, considered great at kinasuhan niya po yung mga lalaking yun at na nakulong po yung yung gang na yun yung po ng lalaking gumawa nun sa kanya. Now, hindi lang po babae ang nire-rape ha. Uh, let me be clear of that. There are also lalaki po na 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 So, tips for preventing sexual assault. So, actually, rape and or sexual assault can happen to anyone, man or woman, and it's never the victim's fault. It's important to know that. So, meron pong lumabas na parang batas yung mga police one time na parang naging controversial na parang victim blaming po tayo. So, there's no absolute way to prevent sexual assault, but it helps to think about how you can stay safe. And uh, this one, uh, meron po tayo, meron po akong shinare dito na Uh, what we call this one na, na tips prevention, crime prevention tips on preventing sexual assault but it's uh, actually based po sa US when you're.edu public safety, crime prevention tips for preventing self-assault but the, the last one, the number 13 na binigay po nilang um, prevention po na measure is Challenge sexist attitudes that make rape acceptable. People often deny the assailant's responsibility in a rape by blaming the victim. So, usually po, doon tayo sa victim blaming. Bakit mo kasi sinuot yung ganyang kaigsing palda? Bakit kasi, ano, pag mananamit ka, nag-i-invite ka ng, ng rape? So, people may do this to convince themselves selves that only bad people are at risk for rape and as long as they live their lives by certain moral standards they are safe like for example isa pa pala uh, when ang babae po ay nakipag-inuman and then na rape po siya doon sa pakikiinuman yun sinisisi din natin yung babae e eh, kung nanahimik siya sa bahay niya hindi siya sana hindi siya sana na rape so the truth is Uh, as long as a person or an, a one person is a risk of rape, everyone is a potential target for this violence. So people can resist rape by challenging the attitude that those who are raped deserve to be victimized and by intervening on behalf of those in danger. So pwede po natin i-challenge yung kanilang Uh, yung pananaw po ng society natin na yung mga na, na re rape daw po ay nagdi-deserve niyan. Pero dapat po talaga ay tumulong po tayo para po sa kanila. I mean, uh, pwede natin sila tulungan on how to recover or when a rape is being done, pwede po natin tayong tumulong para po maalis po sila sa ganong danger. So it can happen anytime to anyone. 